Welcome back. Now, Aspen has posted a 10% rise in interim revenue. The multinational pharmaceutical group has cited revenue growth in commercial pharmaceuticals and manufacturing as the main reasons behind the overall boost in revenue. This did not filter down to the bottom line as headline earnings per share dropped 6%. CEO of Aspen, Stephen Saad, joins us now to put their interim numbers into perspective. Stephen, thanks so much for your time today. Now, revenue growth is still healthy, up 10%. This, however, as I mentioned, did not filter down to your bottom line. Just talk to us about the disconnect there. Oh, so the revenue had a very heavy bias towards our manufacturing section, mm -hmm. where we had heparin. I think the 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 earnings per share, the headline earnings per share, normalised were up about one percent. And what came after that really was the was an impairment. And we did a lot of transactions in the period with transaction costs, which then resulted in negative headline earnings per share. So. Largely a non-cash item, an impairment, um, and a, a and then the transaction costs for some big transactions we did in the period, which will give us growth in the subsequent periods. Now, Stephen, Aspen has been implementing a number of operational strategies that are going to set it up for upbeat growth moving forward. I want us to start off with um, Heparin. Um, you mentioned it uh, briefly, and I want us to talk about the adaption of that business model. Just take us through the changes there and how it's going to benefit the company. So in, sort of in, in round numbers, we've got about 5 billion rand of Heparin, about 4.8 when we last spoke. <clears throat> and now with it's a commodity and we've really you know you either you either scoring which is going on up or you're at risk when it comes down and you're holding expensive stock and we've managed to set up partnerships with the people that, which are slaughterhouses believe mm -hmm. it or not that um that supply the first start of the ingredient we've got we've got a profit model with them which means we don't outlay all the cash up front and it's and so there's quite a big Quite a big reduction in that working capital. In this year alone, we expect our stock of heparin to drop by, by some three billion rand. Um, so, so big, and, and it's you know it's a permanent reduction in working capital. You know, in terms of the other operation operational efficiencies that you refer to, we've made really heavy investments. You know, ten billion rand over the last five or six years mm -hmm. in our sterile infrastructure, both in South Africa and in France. And those sterile contracts and operations are starting to come online now. So it's been a long, it's a slow burn, but uh, very positive for us. And so that is within, you know, you said we set up for growth. That is where the growth's coming from. We've done something called mRNA, uh, which was a very difficult transfer. So you, for those of you that followed COVID vaccines and the new technologies, this was the new technology with all its cold chain and frozen needed to be frozen. We've managed to master it, and that's important for us in this period. So we've uh, we've given guidance that we'd have 500 million rand of contribution in this period, in this financial year, going to 3 billion next year, or no less than 3 billion next year, and no less than 4 billion the following financial year. So that's that is what uh, th that is where the strong growth is going to come out out of manufacturing. Yes, and now the company has also been directing its energy, as you mentioned, um, in forging partnerships. There's been a lot of uh, corporate activity in the past few years. Surely now we're starting to see your manufacturing cap capacity being used up on the back of those agreements. Yes, yeah, so we're probably about halfway in terms of manufacture. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're working really hard to 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 sort of get to to fill that capacity. Mm. That capacity has proven to be very valuable and worthwhile. We've managed to get it into a space in pharmaceuticals when it's most needed. I'm sure you've read about all the all the weight loss products that yes. are out there. These weight loss product and all of those require sterile manufacturers or so those are completely new volumes together with you know this whole surge in, in vaccines and uh, capabilities and capacities all require sterile capabilities so i think we've got we built our factories to come online and be ready at just the most at the most the best possible time uh, to for utilization so because of that we are really hopeful to build on what i've already told you earlier which is the 500 3 billion 4 billion um, a lot of it we hope to build into for africa so mm -hmm. the 
making pediatric vaccines and to make insulins for Africa, together with you know the, the spin-off of what comes out of the obesity and range of obesity products and the mRNA capabilities. So a very exciting time for us in that manufacturing arena. Been very slow, build factories, mm. takes years, five, six years, and finally you get a chance now to start getting income for things that have been literally losing, you know, we've had, you know, we're probably losing over a billion rand a year over this period while we built the factories, put staff in, but we didn't have turnover. All right, before I let you go, are there any other new partnerships or acquisitions in the pipeline? Something we should look um, out for? I think you always got to look out for that with Aspen. Because now, of course, mm. we've, we've really come to the sort of end of the cycle on manufacturing and capex spend. Mm -hmm. For in, Within South Africa, we had some very exciting partnerships with Amgen. And this half from January, you will see the Eli Lilly business that we've taken over distribution of their products here. And uh, one of those fancy obesity products that's called Munjaro, which is Eli Lilly's mm -hmm. product, um, we will be launching in the next in this hopefully in this year sometime during the course of this calendar year um, and we expect that that might be the largest providing we get sufficient stock because that's been the big thing will yes. be the largest product in south african private market in time so all of that and then in um, in in latin america we've got viagra and lipitor and norvex that we acquired in the latin american space so all of that's coming online now so in the second half we hopefully will do at least a billion rand more than we did in this half because of the, the opportunities there. So a lot going on and there's of course more going to come and I'm sure when we chat again in the not too distant future, it'll be with what else we've done, hopefully across both manufacturing and commercial. We'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, thanks so much for joining us today. It was lovely chatting to you. We'll catch up again in the next six months. That was Stephen Saad, the CEO of Aspen.